Let me read to you a passage from the 11th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 14 to 23. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the third week of Lent. St. Luke writes, Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armour in which this man, the man trusted, and divides up the spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. That's from Luke chapter 11, verses 14 to 23. There is Christ, and there is Satan. It is plain from ordinary experience that while some power is in the hands of those who are good, some power is in the hands of those who are evil. Similarly, in the vast unseen world, while God is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, there are spirits who are permitted to exercise power for a time and who are evil. St. Paul writes that God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. So there are two dominions, that of darkness from which we were rescued and that of Jesus Christ to which God has brought us. There is a precedent in the Old Testament for this reference to the darkness. We read in the prophet Isaiah that See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2. So there is a thick darkness over the peoples, and there is the Lord and his glory over you. There is thus a force beyond this visible scene, which is antagonistic to God, and it is wielding power. While Satan is mentioned on but few occasions in the Old Testament, one such stands out among all the references to him in the entire scriptures, including the New Testament. It is his sudden appearance in the garden, which God had planted in Eden, and in which he had placed the man he had formed. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. There the man was to till and keep the garden. He was never to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he was to live with the woman given to him by God. The serpent entered into communication with the woman. The book of Revelation tells us who the serpent is. We read, an angel of heaven seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him. Revelation chapter 20 verse 2. The ancient serpent is the serpent of the beginnings in the garden, the one who is called elsewhere in both Old and New Testaments, the devil and Satan. The word in Hebrew for this serpent of Genesis is nakash. And while it is usually translated as serpent, it means bright or brazen, as in brass. And it has the prefixed article, meaning the shining one. It may suggest 
a shining, upright, spiritual being to whom Eve paid deference, who was somewhat serpentine in appearance, and not merely, say, a snake in a tree. The serpent, or the bright and shining one, is subtle, we read. He gives the impression of superior knowledge. He then proceeds to insinuate that God is not good and that there can be another dominion other than his, one that does not recognize his authority. You can be a God, he suggests to Eve. When you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And God knows this. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. He begins his terrible work with the question, did God say? It questions the rightness of the word of God, whereas the moral sense of man should instinctively accept it as good. Eve saw that the tree was good and a delight and to be desired to make one wise, so she defied the command of God and seduced her husband who did the same. Thus did there begin the new dominion of darkness, that dominion to which St Paul refers and from which God rescued us. The point being made here is that there is, in opposition to God, a dominion, a kingdom, which has the serpentine shining one at its head. At the beginning of our Lord's public ministry, he was, we read, led by the Spirit for 40 days in the wilderness, tempted by the devil. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. The devil, who is identified by the book of Revelation as that ancient serpent, proposed courses of action to him, to Jesus Christ. Particularly significant is his temptation to universal dominion. The devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He described these kingdoms as having been delivered to him. He could place them all in his hands if he, Jesus, would recognize him as supreme. Chapter 4, verse 5 to 8. So the devil presents himself as the Lord of the world and wishes to be in God's place. There are two dominions, that of God and that of Satan. Each, desi each desires universal lordship and Jesus Christ means to wrest power from the grasp of Satan. The temptations end with Satan departing. The two are in battle array and there will be no quarter. The final upshot is a foregone conclusion, but Satan will wreak havoc along the way. The dragon will be seized and bound and cast down forever, but he will have his hour. At the Last Supper, our Lord referred to him as the ruler of this world, and that he was coming, but he had no power over him. John chapter 14, verse 30. All of this brings us to our Gospel that I read earlier, in which our Lord refers to the two kingdoms, that of God and that of Satan. Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Luke chapter 11, verse 14 to 23. We have it on the word of Christ, then, that Satan's is a household, a kingdom. Let us resolve to reject his pretensions and his influence utterly. How sad the case of Judas at the Last Supper. Satan entered him. We have the surpassing dignity, if we are in God's grace, of Christ being in us.